planning rules are there to protect the countryside and preserve the beauty of our towns. But in many communities, there's an urgent need for new housing and infrastructure. Those who've tried and failed to get planning permission know it can be a deeply frustrating process. David and Janet were given this ruined barn on her parents' farm. They want to convert it into a family home to bring up their three children. But for 13 years, planning officials have blocked the idea. The prices are on here for property, you're looking at probably three to 400000 for a basic family home in the countryside. Whereabouts with this, with Dave and ourselves, we'll probably do it for 100000 on a self-build you know, and for young people on here, properties are just too high to, to stay in the area there that were bred and born. Yes, they were saying, well, maybe we'll have to take it to full council. The government um, thinks local well, people, you know, rather than anonymous council, council officials, should get more involved in planning policy. This group in Cumbria's Eden Valley have drawn up their own plan for housing and development. Today, local yeah. residents will vote on whether yeah. to adopt yeah. it. Across yeah. England, many yeah. similar yeah. referendums yeah. are expected. Yeah but the process is long and demanding. So is this something any community could be doing? I think the key concerns are around resource skills and capacity, and that isn't just technical skills for working out housing numbers or environmental constraints or employment opportunities. It's also the skills around facilitation, around community engagement and involvement so that we ensure everybody's voice is heard. Neighbourhood planning groups won't be able to use a referendum to block development outright, and whatever they propose must comply with the strategic objectives of the local council. But these new groups will be able to influence decisions on where homes are built and what they look like. Some developers have been nervous about handing power to unqualified residents, but many, like Steve Errington, see some potential advantages. Localism is a good thing if it's based around an objective assessment of housing need in each local authority area. That We're desperately short of houses, we're desperately short of quality houses, both regionally and nationally. And you can't just impose housing on an area, you've got to have some buy-in from the local community. That's absolutely right. I think you know we don't want the sort of locals versus the developers which has been the case in certain areas in the past this is as we're looking at the barn now yep. the barn when it comes to planning bit. policy yeah, there will policies. always be disputes oh, no. and nothing is ever straightforward but here in the picturesque yeah, Eden Valley they're beginning an experiment the question is whether other communities will want to follow <laughs>